How's it going? I'm Travel Man Dan, and welcome to this week's episode of Weekly Beer and Video Review Show. Woo! Yeah, we are live. Okay, how we doing? The studio messed up in the back. We'll fix the curtain a little bit later, but welcome. Thank you for joining me this wonderful Sunday afternoon. It is, oh man, it's off to a good day. I have not have noticed, in case you check the score, the Buffalo Bills are now 6-2. and two. They beat the Washington Redskins today, and boy, oh boy, was it a, well, we won. Let's say that, okay? I think we could be doing a little bit better. I'd like to steamroll some of these uh, bad teams, some of these 0-7, 1-6 teams. But, hey, a win is a win is a win, and I am happy. The Bills are off to a great start. We are 6-2, six 6-2 and two, six and two people. All right, can you believe it? The Buffalo Bills. We haven't been 6-2 six and two since 1993. And, well, that year we went to the Super Bowl. Although we lost, it was still a great season. And I have those memories forever. So, hopefully, we'll see what this season brings. But it was a great game. I was excited about a lot of good players. Love the fact that Jordan Phillips just keeps crushing people at the line. Really picked up the slack for Harrison Phillips. Um, really sad about his whole journey. They, you know, he got drafted, played a little bit last year, and then he got injured this year. It was going to be a big integral part of our defense. But, hey, nice to see guys like Jordan Phillips picking up the slack. Other guys, well, you saw Devin Singletary. I mean, dude's like a video game, man. He um, is only about 5'7", maybe 190, but the guy is quick. He does some super jukes. He reminds me of a lot of Thurman Thomas and the Tecmo Bowl days. Um, just really, really um, happy to see him do well because, well, for a long time, I really didn't know what we were going to get, especially after releasing or letting uh, LaShawn McCoy go. But really pleased with the, the production today. Three touchdowns from the rookie, Devin Singletary, and I am pumped, and the Bills are off to a 6-2 and two start. So with that being said, as you can see, I'm wearing my hat, but I am not wearing my Buffalo Bills shirt. I have changed. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the first edition of the Travel Man Dan merch. It is here. It is upon us. It is ready to go. Check it out. It's got the logo just covering my heart right here. Wanted to keep it clean. Wanted to keep it simple. Um, I went ahead and released the link next week. 100% sure. I wanted to see all the materials. I wanted to test it out. I wanted to put it through the washing machine. I just wanted to see what it was like before I put it out there. Um, I will go and put the link. So if you want to go ahead and support me and support my channel, um, I will go ahead and put the link on all my videos. I'll make some other little cool micro contents, put them up on YouTube, put them up on Instagram. Trust me. I will make it available for you to go and uh, if you want to support it check it out this is it um, just your basic t-shirt with the logo over my heart because this is uh, well it started from my brain started from my heart and that's why I just wanted to make a really quick simple shirt to go out there and just um, well have some kind of merchandise that people could well show their screen. so this is it i'll be wearing this in a lot of my videos it comes in tons of different colors um it comes in any size pretty much that you want uh, but we also have some hoodies coming out and um we have this one this is the regular travel man dan it's a big world out there make sure you see every bit of it um you know the slogan that's how i end all my videos but this is your very basic one we also have the hoodies and check this out i got a little hoodie action right here Okay, that is the Food Friday hoodie. Check it out. Basically, your same logo and uh, fits really good. It's just a pullover like this. Has a single pocket. You guys are getting privy to the first look at the Travel Dan... <laughs> Travel Man Dan merch. I haven't even started drinking yet. So check it out really quick. Simple and easy. It's got a little pocket right here in case you want to warm up your hands. Okay, hoodie up. Yeah, all right. So... The merch will be open on sale. I'll put the link down below. This video and all my video, this video and all my videos coming up next week. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I got really excited, really pumped up to show you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get into, well, what this live show is about. And if you don't know and you're catching this for the first time, this is the weekly beer and video review show where I go ahead and I talk about last week's videos that came out on Travel Man Dan channel and the weekend and the videos that are coming out this upcoming week 
while reviewing two beers. Now, if you've never seen this particular live show before, well, let me key in on a couple things. As I'm reviewing beers, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm not a beer connoisseur. I'm definitely not a beer snob. I basically just go to one of the stores or something that is suggested in the comments below. So if you think you have a beer that you wanna try, go ahead and put it down in the comment. I'll try to get it and taste it here. I hold no allegiance to nobody. I'm not being branded or sponsored, but I will be. <laughs> um, I just go and grab a beer and I drink a beer and then I talk about last week's video and then I drink another beer and I talk about the videos that come. And that's a little bit about this show. Now let's get started. So the first beer we're gonna do is a really cool label. Really like this beer, okay. Um, well, I like the looks of it. It is called, the name of the company is called, <laughs> let me take a look at it. There's five, three, okay. The name of the company is called The Great Divide, okay? And this beer is called Rody The Grapefruit Rattler. Check it out. Um, the Great Divide Brewing Company, Rody. It's like a little man on a bicycle. Um, it's brewed in Colorado. So, uh, well, the people are per probably pretty healthy. And check it out. On the back, they look like, the reason I say they're probably pretty healthy because Colorado tends to be a state where a lot of people are active and well the bicycling um, hiking mountain climbing just being outdoors is really prevalent there in Colorado but um yeah so great divide it is a grapefruit type beer the percentage of alcohol it's not too strong is 4.2 but hey it's um it's still hot here in Southern California so I thought Let's go ahead and try out one of these grapefruits. So let's go ahead. I got the can because it didn't come in the bottle. Not really sure. Um, I'll do my best always to get a bottle, but if I have to get a can, I will. Let's go ahead and crack this puppy open. Ooh, 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 man, that is a strong, smell that. Oh, you can't smell it through the live. <laughs> wow, okay. So right away, I'm hit with a citric blast from heaven, okay? I can smell the really pungent smelling taste of grapefruit. It is bubbling over, and well, as I smell the grapefruit, it's doing something to my taste buds in the back of my cheeks right here that's really starting to make me savor the flavor of a nice citric drink on a hot day. So let's go dive into this sucker. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Is that even beer? That is ridiculous. Oh man. This here roti. Now, it is a weaker beer, but I'll tell you right off from the jump, right from the get-go here, it tastes like grapefruit juice. It is absolutely wonderful. It tastes like, well, if you're at like a an IHOP or a breakfast nook that you like and you don't want to get cranberry, grape, or orange juice, and you order a straight grapefruit juice, that's what this roadie tastes like. I can't even taste the beer or alcohol. What it, I don't even know what this is. is it, I mean, is it a beer? I believe it's a beer. It was in the beer section at BevMo, but wow, what a fantastic first sip. Roadie. Sweet. Almost to the exact taste of grapefruit juice. Um, yeah, just really, really refreshing. That's my initial impression of this beer. Let's get into the videos that came out last week. Last week's videos were awesome. I put out the Wesp Camp number three video, and that video I called Wesp's Got Talent. If you're not familiar with my Wesp series, make sure you check it out. It's basically the summer camp, and it stands for Waldorf Exchange Summer Program that I worked in this past summer in Latvia. And man, what an amazing place. What a fun, good time. The Latvian people are great. The owner of the camp invited me out there. Leva, you're wonderful. If you ever happen to check this out, I love you for this. Thank you for bringing me out there. And um, just had a great time. And the last week's video was, well, it's camp and you're there for, let's see, 11 straight days. And it's, it's tiring and it, there's a lot of kids running around. You really have to be um, geared up and ready to go. But towards the end of the camp, they put on like a Wesp's Got Talent show. And 
the kids go up there and they perform in front of the whole camp. And there's about 150 between teachers, counselors, um, medics, students, kids, you know, people. We'll just say people on the camp. It's an international camp, so, well, people have different influences from all over the world. So you got to see some really cool stuff, like an accordion, okay? A kid, young kid from Estonia was playing the accordion. And then you had a young girl from China who's playing this really cool flute. And the Latvian kids who are really good at dancing. And they were out there. And if you want to check it out, make sure you check out last week's video. Really cool, really fun stuff to get out there and, and just be, well, as an artist, as a person who likes to perform and get on stage and, and you know, just go out and show your talents and that I'm real supportive of these kids and it's a hell of a good time and I just love for them to get out there and get out of their shell and just go out there and show off their performance so check out that video it came out last Wednesday it's called the West 3 talent show it's um you know on the links I'll go ahead and throw it up there and you can check that one out <clears throat> let's go back and try out this roadie mmm man it's sweet nourishing grapefruity. I mean, I don't even know if you can call this a beer. Now, let's get into the video that I posted last Friday. And it is the Food Friday Latvian traditional food. What the heck is even Latvian food anyway? Well, if you don't know, check out my Food Friday video because it was a lot of fun to go to this place, this restaurant in Old Town Riga called Salvi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, and it might be the accent on it differently, but it is a great place. It's right in downtown Old Riga, and um, man, it's the business, man. It's like really cool, like old traditional Latvian country style. You go in there, and they got all these little tiles in there, and on the tiles are so these really cool painted boats and you know then they have all kinds of old pots and pans and the banisters and them the the ceiling is made of these giant like beams of wood and it's just a really authentic Latvian restaurant and then the food was sensational I had well I had pickled herring with a little bit of uh, like cabbage strings and then I got into one of their more traditional hearty dishes which is like a black bean with onions and pork and stuff like that and it, it's just the way that it's prepared and if you don't know what Latvian food is make sure you check out that food Friday video it is really cool it's a really authentic restaurant and if you're ever in Riga make sure you check that out it was really cool who do we got here hey F oh what do we got Rangenstein brand brand beer okay I will fill up Tang I will definitely try that out I'll try to get it by next week hopefully I can buy it here in Los Angeles and um yeah, if you could just drop me a comment, tell me a little bit more about it. Is it a German beer? Is it, uh, do you know where I can get it? Can I get it here in LA locally? I'd love to hear from you. Um, but I will try to uh, put that out there next week. Thanks for the suggestion, Philip Tang. All right, so this roadie is delicious. Now, I want to get into a couple of things. Now, we already talked football. Talked about the Buffalo Bills, my beloved Buffalo Bills, with my crew here in Los Angeles, California. I love these guys. I meet with them every Sunday. Max, what up, dude? Uh, thanks for having me and the crew over every Sunday. It's just a really cool, great time to, to get around the Buffalo Bills fans. Um, you know, 80% of the people that are in our, my little club here or whatever, Bill's Booster Backer Club, they're born and raised in Buffalo and they live out here in Los Angeles, so it's a really good time. But I want to talk about something that I think is awesome that I spotted today as we were flipping through between the Bills game, the red zone, and whatnot. And that is the woman referee, Sarah Thomas. Okay? Hell yeah, Sarah Thomas. This sip is for you. Um, if you were here, I'd buy you a beer, I'd buy you a shot. But, you know, big ups to you, Sarah Thomas. I think your first NFL refereeing game was last January. And, um, well... I just really thought it was cool to see a woman referee on the field out there and, and just, you know, doing her thing and not being, um, dis let's see, uh, discriminatized uh, uh, against. She was out there and she was basically inspiring young girls and encouraging them to, well, you don't necessarily have to be a referee if you want, but don't be afraid if, if, if you never crossed over there. It's like... For instance, she was uh, entered into the world of refereeing where it's dominantly a male. And she was the first. She's a pioneer. She broke through. And I think that's super cool and inspiring. So 
great job, Sarah Thomas. And um, I wish you a happy, healthy, long career in the NFL and for more women to break in, not only just to sports, refereeing and the NFL, but a lot of other professions and uh, just go out there and show and inspire young girls that they can be anything that they want to be. So that was really um, the icing on the cake. When I saw that, it just made me really, really happy and proud to see. So great job, Sarah Thomas. Um, now, I want to talk about uh, some things that happened a little bit this week. This is a big week in America, or and now I guess around the world. It was Halloween, baby. Halloween. What were you for Halloween? If you got pictures, put them down in the comments. I love to see all that kind of stuff. I was an astronaut. Um, it was a lot of fun. The reason I chose to be an astronaut was because I wanted to commemorate this year being the 50th year that the Apollo 11 spacecraft landed on the moon and the first people were uh, walking on the moon and uh, well it really inspired me my old job I worked at a space museum so that was really cool um, and I got a chance to meet Buzz Aldrin and uh, well you know he was he's an older guy but his accomplishments are you know a worldwide known and it was just really cool so I wanted to take this year's Halloween and kind of adapt it into my own personal life and inspired by uh, the Apollo 11 I was an astronaut <clears throat> if you want to check out the photos uh, you can go to my Instagram which is also travel man Dan and you can check out all the um, pictures of me as an astronaut but uh, really mellow kind of chill Halloween I went to an art gallery which I'll get into in a minute and um, I saw a really great artist who uh, I'm going to be doing a Travel Man Dan episode on, so don't you worry, you're going to be able to see uh, Pete Von Schilly and all of his really cool monsters and creations of monsters, and um, this guy is epic. I saw him at the 800 Gallery on Lancashire Boulevard. It's a really cool, like, uh, smaller gallery with a theater upstairs, and the really cool thing that I love about it is 800 is the painter and design union for the movies, so... It's people that actually like work on movie sets and they basically build and construct movie sets and get them all pretty and fancy for the movies. Not the 729, the 800. They kind of work together. It's, um, and uh, what's really cool about it is they have a huge uh, talent pool to pull from. So then this art gallery supports those local uh, union people and puts up their artwork. So um, I'll go ahead and let you know more about that in the description below if you wanna check out that art gallery. And definitely gonna go ahead and uh, do an episode on it. And I'm gonna show you uh, Pete Van Schilly's art Hopefully I get an interview with them and I'll show you the gallery. So stay tuned for that. That's what I did on Halloween. If you want to let me know what you did on Halloween, I would love to hear from you or let me know what you dressed up at. You know, just hit me out, reach out to me. I love that. Um, and uh, yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and talk about something else real quick. And then I'll wrap up this week's topics. And that's about comments <laughs> since we're on the comments. Yeah. I don't even know how to say it, man, but I'm just so humbled at um, how receptive people are out there. And I received a comment this past week, and I just want to say thank you so much for all the support out there, guys. I know you guys um, that are here watching it live or watching the replay, I can't thank you enough. Really appreciate the support. I received a comment, and I was literally lost for words at, um, at, at the stranger's kindness. Remember, kindness is free. Okay, so it's okay to go out there and let people know um, that you enjoy their stuff, that you enjoy their creativity, or wish them well. And um, just the, the love and support that I'm getting back, I'm humbled by it, I'm flattered by it, and um, I just wanted this to take this time to say thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, the comment was just really, really good, and I really appreciate that. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you to everyone that's out there supporting me. That doesn't mean you have to buy shirts or you have to watch all the videos, but just, you know, I, I, an occasional comment, like, whatever. I just really can't say thank you enough. Now, let me go ahead and I'll get into the last bit of what I want to talk about this week. I'll slam this old roadie down, give it a score, and we'll get into next week's video. Uh, this past week, we had a great time. Well, it was last night with my improv troupe. And it was a really fun time. I do improv uh, every Saturday, Saturday, the first Saturday of every month. I train it during the weeks. And uh, we had a show, and it was a really good show, almost a sold-out show. It was um, 
the energy was good. We went up there, made some people laugh, and we had a great time doing it. So if you're ever interested in coming and checking out the shows and you want to see Travel Man Dan live in action, hit me up in the comments below. Hit me up on the DMs, um, on my Instagram or whatever. I'll make sure I put the tickets at the door, get you tickets. If you want to come and check it out, don't worry. Um, I think I can handle all you guys. <laughs> and uh, just let me know if you want to come and check it out. I'd love to have you come out there and uh, see what we got. Uh, we're, we're a younger troupe and we're just getting started, but we go out there, we have a good time, and that was a great show last night. So uh, cheers to my improv group. Let's go ahead and finish this roadie and I'll give it a score. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe they call this beer. Unbelievable, refreshing. I have that sour, like, almost like tacky, sticky feeling on your tongue and the roof of your mouth when you drink too much pulpy and citrusy uh, juices. Just a fantastic brew. Um, don't feel the strength and the is at only 4.2. You know this one is really good. If you're cycling, maybe you wanna pull over to the side of the road or maybe you're out mowing the lawn or doing something that you were out in the hot sun, maybe the beach action, and you just wanna put down two or three of these real quick, boom, boom. Um, this is the one to go to. This roadie is fantastic. Um, I really like it. I'm going to explore this place, uh, this great Divide Brewing Company a little bit more, see if they have some other flavors. I'm not a big fan of the fruit drinks, and especially beer, but uh, this one, I am really, really shocked at how good it is. And I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to give it my highest score. I'm going to give it an 8.5. That's right, folks, an 8.5. <laughs> I don't know if I'm feeling really good because the Bills won. But I'm not even bullshit. I'm not even bullcrapping. Sorry, kids, if you're out there watching. Don't say that word. That's not a good word. Um, but this is really, really a good drink. So let's put that down. And so we're on the topic of football. We've been talking a lot about football today. And, well, if you watch American football, you know what I'm talking about as I lead into this next segment. Every time you watch an NFL game, you must see this about 8 to 10 times per game. What am I talking about? The Bud Light Night. That's right. The Bud Light Night. Bud Light Night came into existence, I want to say it was last year or maybe the year before that. And it, then it's kind of ridden off the coattails of like the king and the, the dilly dilly. It was like this. Um, but then the Bud Light Night kind of stepped to the forefront. And this year in the NFL, he's been pushed back a little bit by the Bud Light Platinum Night. That's right, the Bud Light Platinum Night is an even bigger, stronger, more tougher night that you'll see on these commercials. And so, while I was watching today, I was inspired to go ahead and actually see what all the hubbub's about. So here we go, this is the second beer. This is the Bud Light Platinum. Now, I know what you're thinking, Bud Light, kind of like Aquafina, but, uh, well, this one is actually stronger. Maybe that's where the platinum comes in. It is a 6% alcohol, so, ding, it registers as a strong beer on the weekly beer and video review show with Travel Man Dan. Wow, how do you like that? 6% from a Bud Light, okay? Usually the Bud Light, I don't know, it probably teeters around a 3 to a 4, but the Bud Light Platinum is pretty cool. It comes in this, like, well, you can't really see it. I don't know what you call it. Um, this blue glass. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the old... Uh, well, I know Zima came in, um, <laughs> in in crystal glasses. And if you guys know what I'm talking about with Zima, if you ever see Zima, is it ever out there? Is it is, is Zima still in existence? If you know where I can get it, let me know. I'd love to suck back a couple of Zimas. But, um, yeah, this is the Bud Light Platinum bottle, 6%. Obviously, you know the brand Bud Light. And if you've ever watched any sporting event, especially NFL, American football, you've seen the commercial a, a dozen times, I guarantee it. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's see if it, I believe it is a twist off. Yep, okay. Check it out, it's smoky, okay. You can always get that first blast of gas coming out of the neck, all right? Okay, doesn't really smell like much, but... Um, Hey, we'll give it a try. You know, that's what we do here on this show. We'll give beers a try. And, uh... All right, okay. Wasn't really expecting that. Definitely stronger than your 
uh, typical Bud Light. It's got more of an amber uh, flavor for it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's red or not because it's in the blue, but it is definitely a stronger of the Bud Light families because I've had Bud, I've had Bud Light, and well, now Bud Light Platinum. I'm not sure where that range is in, but maybe it's just lighter calories. It says, brewed for the night. That's the slogan, okay. Brewed for the night, so uh, maybe that's where the blue bottle comes in. It's chic, it's cool, it's hip. You know, because a lot of times you, people don't go to bars and they drink Bud Lights. It's like, you know, that's what um, <laughs> that's what you drink at the beach when you want to put down 30 of them or so. But uh, yeah, okay, so Bud Light Platinum, there it is. Now, let's get into, well, hey, did you see that UFC fight last night for the BMF belt? Jorge Mazadal beats Nate Diaz. Really crazy cut on uh, Nate's eye, but I'll tell you what, man, those are two BMFs, man. Both of those guys, uh, the card was awesome. Really enjoyed watching it. It's tough, to, um, you know, when Nate got cut and stuff like that. And I know people are, are angry and pissed at the stoppage. But in hindsight, you know, if you've been hit there a couple other times, which Nate is crazy durable. You know, the guy, you know, he's got a, a resume that is uh, amazing. And I, I felt bad that he got, um, the ref stopped it. The doctor stopped it. Not the ref. The doctor stopped it because the cut was getting uh, so big over his left eye. But, you know, it's always, uh, those, these guys are badasses no matter what. And, you know, safety is always number one. Uh, it's unfortunate. I think the fight would have, uh, you know, never known because Nate's amazing in those last two championship rounds. But salute to both of you guys. Thank you for uh, going out there and putting it out there for us, the fans. Appreciate it, guys. And uh, we'll see you uh, when they run it back. But um, now I want to talk about the videos that are coming up this upcoming week. So this upcoming week <clears throat> is the final the last video of the WESP series and it is video number four. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun because I go ahead and I take you through the camp. I show you a little bit about shooting arrows. Um, you know, I, I go ahead and I shoot arrows and I'm taught by my good friend Giannis. And then the last night of the camp, we always do like a Brazilian carnival. The kids get really squirrely and squirrely and, and they all dress up and we have this big old kind of fashion show where everyone dressed up almost like Halloween. So it's kind of fitting that it comes to the next week. And then we just have a good time and just go out there and geek out and dance around and you know have fun at the little cabin in the forest. So make sure you check that out. It's sad to see, but I love when I go ahead and I film stuff and then I go back to it to edit because it brings back a lot of good memories that I had this past summer. Really looking forward to seeing them kids again. Hopefully I'll be able to latch on to another camp and I'll be able to, uh, well, just kind of bring the same energy and element to another camp. So yeah, really good stuff. Make sure you check out each of the videos if you're interested. And if you're ever interested in sending your kids to these camps, you can contact me. You can contact uh, Leva down in the link below. I put all this stuff in the description. Really good fun camp for kids. It's an international camp. Really fun and amazing. Um, yeah, check it out. And then Food Friday is the second part to the traditional Latvian restaurant that I ate at Salvi. And that's really cool because that's the main course a little drinky drink, shots, 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 shots. And then um, we got some of our, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, we drink this, uh, we, no, I don't have the right one with me. I thought I brought it back, but um, that we drink some stuff and then we eat some dessert. So make sure you check that video out. I'm gonna go ahead and eat the main course, one of my favorite all-time eating experiences. Um, just really good, awesome restaurant, tasty, hearty food, and just a really overall, wonderful and an outstanding experience at that restaurant so make sure you check that video out that is next week's uh food friday let's go ahead and try this bud platinum again bud light platinum all right not bad second pole is very good kind of tastes like a thicker lager not your uh bud water a regular i don't find one of the things i really like about this beer is well you can feel the the strength in it it's definitely i like a stronger brew so really good stuff not bad not bad now let's get into this segment because we are going a little bit longer but i'm having a good time why not that's how this show goes i'm having the feels we're going to go ahead and change out the background pretty soon that's going to be real fun and eventually well hopefully we'll get into a studio and have a really fun show where i'll be able to bring all kinds of cool people on but in the future in the future calm down i'm really excited getting amped up all right, so that was the videos that are coming out this week. Now we're going to go into the segment of 
What are you watching? What are you reading? Excuse, excuse me. All right. Well, what are we? Uh, what are we watching? I started the new show. It's been out. It's in its fourth season. But I started because I'm a little late on a lot of things. But that's okay. Now that the way that social, uh, not social media, new media is, uh, so you can go ahead and binge it. So that's really cool. So now I got four seasons I can get through. Um, it is Sherlock. And it's really cool. I saw it on Netflix, and that's what I'm watching. I just started the first pilot episode of season one. It's with Benedict Cumberbatch, is playing Sherlock Holmes. And then um, uh, Martin Freeman is playing uh, Watson. And if you know who Martin Freeman is, he is Gollum. He was a creature actor, really outstanding actor. And I love him to see that he's getting his chance to show his his craft and his skill. I'm sure that um, British people know who he's been, but... Um, He's a phenomenal guy, a nice, nice actor. He's doing the show with the limp. He plays an army doctor. And what's really cool about the show is it's set in modern times. I mean, I love the Robert Downey Jr. like movies, the Sherlock Holmes movies, but <clears throat> I love that. Um, I, it's, I, I don't know if it's how it's written or how it's shot, but when they're able to think things through and then they take you on that journey of thinking and you kind of go through the process of what's gonna happen before it actually happens, that's fucking bad. That's badass, and I really like that. Sorry about that. Just dropped a quick F bomb. You never heard that, YouTube. It happens. You know, what are you going to do? But um, that's what I'm watching. What am I reading? All right, this is what I'm reading. <laughs> now, I get a lot of heat for this because I do actually read a lot of books. I like it, and um, I think as an entertainer, as an actor, it's one of the free skills that you can always, always, always take advantage of. Like, you can always get better as a reader. And um, it's such an important skill. Uh, I'm not saying that you like need to have the knowledge or anything. I'm talking about as an actor. Good actors are usually good readers. Um, but with this one, I'm going ahead and I'm reading <coughs> da -da -da, Pete Boncholi's Monster Book. Okay, it's the history of monsters. This is the artist that I was telling you about that we went and, uh, and saw. But look at his book art okay it is a picture book it's really cool i guess it's not really reading but check out some of the monsters that he's drawn okay over the years and then over here uh he has them labeled and then he tells you which ones they are really, really sweet okay this is what i'm watching this is what i'm reading like look at this one my take on the alien in john w campbell's story who goes there and then look at this creature alien look at this thing okay Three eyes, vicious teeth, kinds of like snaky skins. Okay, this guy's brilliant. I mean, can't wait to, to meet him and to, well, I did meet him, but I can't wait to actually interview him and put him up on a Travel Man Dan episode. Really great guy. Let's take a look at him here on the back. That's uh, that's Pete Van Schoele. He is really cool, easy to talk to. Um, <laughs> look at this crazy SOB. Look at him. He's got three eyes on all over the place. He's all banshee out and going nuts. And, uh, yeah, that's what I'm reading. And uh, that's what I'm watching. If, uh, if you want to go ahead and put down in the comments below what you're reading, what you're watching, I'd love to hear from you. Any suggestions would be appreciated because I always look to hear what other people are watching. It's kind of like uh, the Monday morning cooler talk. What are you watching? What are you reading? That kind of stuff. So let me know down in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and suck down this Bud Light Platinum. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit you with the quote of the week. And we're going to close this show. And, uh, well, I'll see you again next week. All right. First impression was good. It's heavy, heavier than a regular Bud Light. It's tasty. It's malty. A good aftertaste, nice swig, easy flow, doesn't make you choke on it. Overall, really good beer, definitely will try it again. Would I recommend it? Yeah, I'd say try it out. What score am I going to give it? I'm going to give it a modest 7, okay? Really good. The one thing that, the only thing I can be critical about it is, well, I grew up in a time when they used to have these beers called Red Wolf and Red Dog, and they were like Ambers. And I'm not sure if I ever recovered from them, but I just never really liked that flavor. And to me, this Bud Light Platinum kind of brings back that red flavored beer. You know, if you like that kind of thing, I definitely see you check it out. 
Will I shy away from it? No, absolutely not. I'll pretty much drink any beer twice. And, uh, well, it's not a bad beer. I gave it a seven. It's a good score. It's definitely stronger than your regular Bud Light. I suggest you try it. Now, let's get into the quote of the week, and then I'm going to wrap this puppy up. This might be the longest ever weekly beer and video review show with Travel Man Dan. Thank you for staying with me. Whoever stayed with me the whole time, thank you. All right, so this week's quote was brought to me or brought to my attention by E.E. E. Cummings, who is an American poet um, in the early 1900s. And he said, the most wasted of days is one without laughter. <laughs> and it's perfect. I mean, it's just a light, easy quote. It says the most wasted of days is one without laughter. And what that really means is if you don't laugh every day or a day without laughter it sucks, it just sucks. So, you know, as I go through my day, every day, I always laugh. I have a good time. Whether I'm laughing at myself usually or laughing at something I do or what other people say. Um, you know, just really, it's about, this quote means, like, don't take life so serious. Obviously, there's elements in our life that we have to take serious. Our family, financially, economically, uh, our health, okay? Take these things serious, but have some laughter with each and every one of them, you know? Um, because life is short, and that, that's kind of what this quote is, is uh, symbolically saying without actually saying. Life is short, and don't spend any day not laughing. Because laughing makes you feel good. It takes the stress away. Um, it brings you in with other people. And um, when you laugh with other people, you, you have something to uh, correspond and to, well, um, also be in with. Uh, so it's really important to just live every day. Have a light heart. You know, take your, your serious stuff very serious. But also, you know, have some laughter and try to live each and every day with um with being funny whether you're being funny or you laugh at your friends or something you know it's just really good it makes it makes your heart feel good and, and you know life is hard no matter what you do uh no matter who you are or where where it is it's all relative right so uh understand that is also as hard as life is it's also very fun and easy going and you can also enjoy it and have some laughs so, and if you, if you can't laugh, well, go to my Instagram and my YouTube and, and, and laugh at me. I don't care. Whatever. Um, because it's all good. It makes me feel good. I hope it makes you feel good. Thanks so much. It is, uh, well, it's the longest time I've gone. It's almost 40 minutes. I appreciate you hanging with me. Check out the new Travel Man Dan merch. Um, <clears throat> Buffalo Bills, we're on a tear here. Hopefully next week we'll be 7-2. Thanks a lot for joining me. I'm Travel Man Dan, and remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it. Awkward, turning off live.